South Africa's politics, South Africa's economy under a huge amount of stress that's dominating the news. It's front, left and centre of what everybody is thinking right now. Continuing standoff between the Hawks, the Finance Minister, Pravin Gordon and the South African Revenue Service is costing the economy at large as well. Huge sell-off in the bond market. The RAND continuing to show a country on the precipice of a potential downgrade. And if the economy is allowed to be derailed from the National Development Plan, well, then all bets are off. Last night on the show, we had Ntlantla Nene, who was painting a, a cautiously positive picture for South Africa, but only if the centre holds. And that is the big question for my guests this evening. This is The Moneymakers. I'm Bruce Whitfield. Tonight, I'm joined by the Chief Executive of the Black Business Council, Mohale Ralebito, and the Chairman of two JSE-listed companies, Aspen Pharmacare and Massmart, Kuseni Damini, to look into the implications of the standoffs that we find ourselves in in South Africa right now. Mohale, what's going on? The place feels like it's falling apart again. Well, the place, thankfully, won't and hasn't fallen apart, thanks to the robust institutions that are in place. But certainly there are some challenges, and we would do well to resolve those challenges speedily and stop scoring the very expensive own goals that have been scored over the last few months, particularly as the relationship between government, business, labor, and by extension civil society has been growing towards building a better South Africa and not just one that's seeking to avert a sovereign credit rating downgrade. I, I asked Jabu Mabuza this question last week. I'm interested in your response. Mm. Do, do you feel like the assault on the National Treasury and on Prime Gordon is a slap in the face of those efforts? I don't think it's so much, in, it's intended at least to be a slap in the face because everybody agrees that those efforts are necessary to improve the fortunes of South Africa Incorporated and to make good on the hopes and ambitions of the many people who are resident in uh, in this country and indeed of the people who are looking upon South Africa on the continent to play its natural role as a catalyst not only for integration mm. but for overall development. The developments however which relate to uh, the minister and the approach by the Hawks are clumsy at best. If there's a set of issues for the minister to engage which meets the test for what the Hawks should involve themselves in, proceed, charge him and let the rule of law take its course. If not, stop harassing the man and stressing him and his family mm -hmm and allow him to get on, particularly given the central role that he's playing in the dealings between business and government and hopefully finally starting to better execute on an aligned basis so that South Africa can move forward as a collective and not in fragmented bits. That was powerful. That was good. Hey, because I mean, that was pretty good. Th there is a very real risk that the crisis of confidence, as as said to last night, I said, uh, it was good that you were fired because actually <laughs> it, it created a crisis of confidence that wouldn't have otherwise happened, and actually we would have got a June downgrade probably anyway um, because we were just uh, we had a slow puncture sort of environment in terms of confidence in the economy. That precipitated a crisis. The crisis created an opportunity. People have come together and have been working together. Both of you uh, have been part of this process of working together. There is a very real risk right now that some people involved in this process go, you know what, it's a waste of time. Actually, business goes back into its silo, labor goes back into its silo, and government goes back into its silo, and we don't talk again for another 20 years. Big risk. There is a big and real risk that that may happen, but I am very confident that the leaders in business and government and labor will not allow that to happen. There is a serious and real risk that the current situation may reverse the gains that have been made over the last eight months. You write that something good ironically came out of the firing of former minister Ntlantlanene. We started a new conversation. Uh, we started seeing the country rallying around, around the issue of a potential threat of being downgraded. We need to continue the good work that was started in the beginning of this year to make sure that we prevent another downgrade as we move towards December. We can do that and that just requires cool health to prevail and we need stabilization and normalization of our institutions, the way in which our institutions conduct themselves, it has got to be in line with the constitution, it has got to be based on the rule of law, and it has got to be based on the fact that we need a stable economy, we need to focus on unlocking the forces that can allow our economy to grow at much higher than zero percent. This stuff is hard enough without stories coming from the sidelines. I mean, without what appears to be a deliberate attempt to destabilize the National Treasury. I think if there is a deliberate attempt to do that, it is really regrettable. And we need to make sure that all leaders, especially in government, and indeed in the NPA, 
they've got to act in a very responsible and very matured, considered way. We're seeing part of that cabinet begin to fragment a little bit. Jeremy mm. Cronin saying, I'd rather be out than in this mess. Yes. Um, finally, fi finding his voice. Cyril Ramaphosa um, uh, at the weekend expressing support for Pravin Gordon. The president's mm. own spokesperson expressing support for Pravin Gordon with the caveat that he can't interfere uh, in a Hawks investigation. Yes. What we need now, as, as you said earlier, Mohale, is just like either announce the charge or announce that you're backing away and there is no case to answer. Make a call. Absolutely, because you can't punish the minister uh, by continually casting aspersions. It's a violation of, of his rights. There's meant to be only one way in which one gets punished, which is there's a fair and proper determination of guilt or otherwise, and then life carries on. But you can't, sust you can't have a sustained series of uh, you know inquiries the basis of which is not entirely clear um, and if there's a case proceed yeah uh, if there's a case and, and that, that is the big issue we and there doesn't seem to be <laughs> and it, well like in the, john Crickler, uh, a well uh, a well respected jurist has uh, said he's, he's looked at it uh, george bezos we, we've heard of him he's he, he's had one or two big cases in his lifetime he's <laughs> had a look at it he says uh, there, this issue is squeaky clean from gordon's own lawyers have had a look at it either test it or, or, or get out of town so where does this leave us as we sit right now if the status quo is maintained and Prime Gordon is allowed to retain his job and keep doing the good work that he's doing in terms of being the ringmaster mm -hmm. for the South African economy. We dodge the ratings downgrade bullet, provided we don't keep interfering. Hopefully so, because there's still some very important things to be delivered upon because the narrative has moved on from just being about avoiding a downgrade to one saying, how do you catalyze growth? Mm -hmm. And through that process, business has shown it. Absolutely. And that, and that and that's a really important issue. But how do we get back to the mm. business of growing the economy to create more jobs, opportunity, and reduce unemployment? But nobody's, we're not, uh, not publicly anyway. What are you guys doing in the, in the smoky back rooms of growth, Koseni, in terms of <laughs> actually getting to some level of agreement mm. as to how this can happen better? I think the first thing that needs to happen, there has to be a ceasefire between the Hawks and, and Pravin Gordon. Or just a total and cessation of hostilities and, 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 and a peace deal. Absolutely, fire, total cessation of hostilities. And we need to focus on the things that matter. What are the things that matter? It's growth, it's employment creation, it's investor confidence, and it's really, you know, de dealing with the issues of service delivery. We've just come out of the local government elections. Service delivery was center stage, and people are waiting out there for their lives to be improved. Can it happen with President Jacob Zuma in, as president of South Africa? It, uh, this is the great irony in all of this, which is that as testing and irritating as some of these developments are because they damage the country, mm. it's also part of the maturing of a democracy to say that uh, you have a president, but you have the entire system, which you cannot discount as uh, recent developments have betrayed. So many people argue that much of that system has been corrupted. And that's, well, and that, and that's the problem. Well, you can make those arguments and assertions, but the fact of the matter is that uh, there is still a scenario that says that the presidential prerogative is not absolute. He's been taken to court. Like There are many jurisdictions where sure. the things that have happened here wouldn't have happened, and we forget that it's only been 20 years plus. Notwithstanding be, that. Wouldn't it be so much easier if everybody just did the right thing? Oh, without a doubt. <laughs> we'd love that. We'd yeah. love that. Cause we Make it nice wanna, and boring, yes. Because we kind of want to get back to the business of transforming this economy yeah. and making it inclusive rather than dealing with issues that are a distraction to that core discussion of saying, because for us, it's one of the central risks that the country faces, which is unless you transform it and make it more inclusive, we'll forever be range bound in terms of our growth potential. We need to unleash the entire economy and not dial in distractions that prevent us dealing with those core issues. We, we're perpetuating the, the, tr the travesties of apartheid in terms of the silos of the economy in which if generally, if you were white and privileged in 1994, Provided you haven't messed things up for yourself and your family, you're white and you're privileged still. Um, in, in 2016, not enough black people have come into yeah. mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. similar silos. We've seen mm -hmm. some advancement, but we haven't seen enough of it. Ironically, mm -hmm. this standoff yeah. makes it that much harder for the vast majority of people in South Africa who are stuck in poverty to ever get out of it. And I think that's the important thing, Bruce. We have to realize that what is at stake is the, the plight of the poorest of the poor. And when there's a saying that when two, two bulls fight, it's the grass that suffers. Mm -hmm. And it's actually the, the masses that suffer when the elites can't get their act together, whether it's political elites or it's business elites. We owe it to the people. We need to stabilize and normalize the governance situation in the country so that we can go back to basics and focus on growth, 
job creation and improving ordinary people's lives. But if you're the National Executive Committee of the ANC, the governing party, post the local government mm. election trouncing, sure, the ANC's got 54, 55% of national support now. Yes. But you're looking ahead to 2019 and wondering what on earth next, surely? Oh, absolutely. You'd have to say that you're losing the ability to run the structures through which you execute on your policy directive. Already there's a rebellion um, within the Eastern Cape ANC, which are told Gwede Mantashi that they would like to be, be, rid of, uh, be, be rid of Jacob Zuma. They've lost Nelson Mandela Bay, they've yes. lost Kucha, the area around Nyasna yeah. and George and that part of the world as well, yeah. to the Democratic Alliance. It's a, from a liberation politics perspective, it's a travesty. Of magnanimous proportion. Yeah, it's an extraordinary, but it's an extraordinary development. And uh, surely, if you are in, uh, in high-level politics, you see this and you seek to act to prevent a bigger defeat later on. It's a very important point you are raising about the politics at play within the ANC. Let's not forget we've got December 2017 when we have the electoral conference of the ANC. Have you seen the, have you seen the damage that's happened to the now. economy in the last mm. week? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if we can survive yeah. another mm. year. Yeah. And that, I mean, that informs part of what yeah. is at play now. They, you've got different factions trying to jostle for position, trying to outmaneuver each other. And we will see more of this. And the, the key thing, though, it has to be played and orchestrated in a very responsible way that doesn't damage the economy, that doesn't damage foreign investor confidence in particular and local investor confidence in general. From a business perspective, what do you make of the call? It's come from the ANC Youth League. Gwede Mantashe suggested last week, maybe this December 2016 elective conference idea isn't such a, t or early, I think he didn't say December, an early elective conference isn't such a bad idea after all. It would provide some certainty regardless of which way it went. I think those structures do have to consider whether or not they shouldn't move up uh, certain calendar events to engage the very significant uh, developments of an economic and political nature that need to be engaged. You cannot have a response of, of a meaningful nature of some sort to deal with some very significant issues. The politics of this country have always been inextricably linked to the economics and right now the economics of this country are not where they need to be in the efforts to advance uh, them are suffering, something needs to be done. My thanks to my guest, Mahalia Ralebitso, Chief Executive of the Black Business Council and Chairman of two companies, Aspen and Massmart, Kuseni Damini, joining us this evening as we look at the vibrancy, the excitement, the joy and the downs of some days in South Africa. You've got to, the, the great story about South Africa is to be an optimist in South Africa, you've got to be the kind of person who goes to a one-way street and looks both ways. It's the safest way to cross a one-way street in South Africa. Right now, in terms of our economy and our politics, it feels a bit like that. Thank you so much for watching The Moneymakers. Till next time, bye-bye.